The Pleistocene era, also referred to as the Great Ice Age, is most known for the frequent formation of large ice sheets and other glaciers on land masses. This epoch began about 2.6 million years ago and ended 11,700 years ago. During the Pleistocene, modern humans, or Homo sapiens, developed and expanded across much of the Earth before the era ended. Many Ice Age giants, such as woolly mammoths and saber-toothed cats, lived throughout the Pleistocene period, but many of them perished in a mass extinction event at the end of the Pleistocene. This brings us to a crucial question, what exactly caused the Pleistocene Ice Age? Scientists are still understanding how ice ages happen, but we do know that they are triggered by a number of factors, including changing carbon dioxide levels, Earth's position in the solar system, and the amount of heat our planet receives from the sun. For the past 50 million years, the Earth has been undergoing a cooling trend. The Isthmus of Panama land bridge between North and South America created around 4.5 million years ago, perhaps triggering the last cold age. The Atlantic and Pacific Oceans could no longer interchange tropical water, sending warm water northward and increasing precipitation, which fell as snow in the Northern Hemisphere. As a result of the snowfall, glaciers and ice sheets formed, blocking sunlight and maintaining Earth's cooling trend. Now that we know it is called the Ice Age, it is certain to wonder how cold this era was. The Ice Age peaked some 20,000 years ago, when enormous swaths of North America, Europe, South America, and Asia were covered in glaciers. Towards the ice margin, mean annual temperatures were around 6 degrees Celsius or colder, and climbed away from the ice margin to around 0 degrees Celsius near the permafrost's southern reach. Near the ice margin, the mean air temperature was 12 to 20 degrees Celsius cooler than today's levels. The climate during the Ice Age was also drier than it is today. There was minimal precipitation since most of the water on Earth's surface was ice. Rainfall was roughly half of what it is now. Because glaciers retained water in ice sheets, sea levels were substantially lower and shorelines were often much farther away. To digress a little, did hearing about the Pleistocene remind you of Manny from the Ice Age movie? If it did, then you're imagining it right. Woolly mammoths are particularly characteristic, amongst others, of this era. Talking more about the flora and fauna, plants and animals from the Pleistocene epoch are comparable to those seen now in many ways, yet there are significant distinctions. Furthermore, the geographical distribution of many Pleistocene fauna and flora types was much different from what it is now. The evolution of huge mammalian forms involved the adaptation of many of them to Arctic environments. The last ice age is known for hosting many large mammals called megafauna. Woolly mammoths, woolly rhinoceros, muskox, moose, reindeer, and other animals that lived in the freezing periglacial zones were among them. The elephant, mastodon, bison, hippopotamus, wild hog, deer, gigantic beaver, horse, and ground sloth were among the large creatures that lived in the more temperate zones. Towards the end of the Pleistocene period, most megafauna were extinct. Short-faced bears, armadillo-like Lyptotherium, and helmeted muskox, as well as mastodons, saber-toothed cats, and the majority of mammoths, were among the extinction victims in North America. This era is not short of any controversial theories, Human hunting at the end of the Pleistocene caused or contributed to the extinction of numerous Pleistocene big animals, according to a controversial idea initially offered in the 1960s. True, the extinction of huge animals on several continents appears to coincide with the entrance of humans, but whether early human hunters were numerous and technologically skilled enough to wipe out entire species remains an issue. It's also been suggested that throughout the Pleistocene, a disease wiped off species after species. The mystery remains unanswered. It's possible that a combination of these events contributed to the Pleistocene extinction. Lastly, one of the most significant events of this era is the evolution of humans. Paranthropus species, as well as early human progenitors, 
were still present at the start of the Pleistocene, but they vanished during the Lower Paleolithic, leaving Homo erectus as the only hominin species known in fossil records throughout much of the Pleistocene. Some 1.8 million years ago, Aculian lithics appeared alongside Homo erectus, replacing the more rudimentary Oldowan industry employed by Agari and the first Homo species. Around 300,000 years ago, the Middle Paleolithic saw more diverse speciation within Homo genus, including the development of Homo sapiens. That's all for now. We will come up with new facts about the Pleistocene era soon. Subscribe to Explify to stay updates. See you in the next one.